Um, I have a throat cold, sorry for my coughing in this video, and um, sorry for the quality of light. My webcam is kaput, I think. Um, I got a response from Eric Orwell essentially asking me, if you don't like what I'm saying, then give me a counter suggestion as to how society should be, or something like this. Um, presuppositions, he says, are necessary to build any logical system. That's assuming, of course, that we can build a logical system to order the affairs of beings like ourselves who are both logical and illogical. Um, I'm going to read off what my response is to anyone who's got ideas as to <clears throat> how society ought to be. I'm not a revolutionary and I'm not a radical reformer and I never have been and I'll explain why by reading this little blurb here. And again, I'm sorry if I stutter or sorry if I cough. In the land of Urbania, the trains all run on time and everything is looked after by the National Board of Benefactors. The benefactors know and have known for centuries what is best for the citizens of Urbania, or at least what is best for most of the people, most of the time. They have also tended to believe, although occasionally there have been heated debates on the subject, that the mass of the citizens haven't the slightest idea what is good, for, uh, what is good either for them or for the nation as a whole. The people therefore need to be guided, and what better, and who better to guide them than those who have always had the greatest happiness of the greatest number, always in mind. Everything, so the benefactors tell anyone who will listen, is a matter of education and social progress. Once upon a time, would, would anyone believe it today, Urbania was a savage and chaotic place, full of a dissatisfaction, violence, free thinking, disease, and unreason. Then the Great Enlightenment came, and the basic problem, capitalized, was uncovered. <clears throat> that problem, of course, was raw human nature, a wayward quality that human beings could well do without. Raw human nature was like a wilderness. Well-governed human nature was like a beautiful garden. And the benefactors came together to cultivate that garden. Gardens, however, sometimes have weeds in them. And the weeds in the Urbanian population were the three great classes of difficult people, also capitalized. The benefactors, however, created three institutions to take care of the three problem groups. And these institutions function smoothly, by and large, to this day. The first of these institutions is the prison, a place to hold, uh, hold and treat those difficult people found guilty of crime. The second of the institutions is the hospital, <clears throat> a place to hold and treat those difficult people found guilty of illness. And the third of the institutions is the school, a place to hold and treat those difficult people found guilty of both youth and ignorance. It is, say the benefactors, these three institutions which mark the greatness of modern Urbania and which have taken it, its citizens from the depths of chaos to the heights of good order and social harmony. The three great institutions work so well, most of the time, because they are all built in accordance with the fundamental principle of Urbanian life, the square. The nearer that everything comes to rectilinear perfection, the better life is for everyone, or so the theory goes. <clears throat> Roundness, though of course is not outlawed, is therefore reduced to a minimum. Thus, the three institutions in their various organization, realizations throughout the land tend, like so much else in Urbania, to be oblong. The squares of cell and classroom, ward and wardrobe, the rectangles of doors, windows, corridors, vestibules, stairways, elevators, tables, desks, cupboards, lockers, and boxes. On many a wall are affixed neat sheets of paper listing the rules and regulations appropriate to a place pinned up squarely where everyone with the ability to read can peruse them. <clears throat> Time is marked off not just in minutes and hours, but re-squared into periods for this period and uh, for periods for this and periods for that. Time to get up 324. Time for your apparent, Miss, Mrs. Gummidge. 
Time for your arithmetic class, young Postlethwaite. It is also organized that, just as the benefactors intend, the inmates of the three institutions soon become ill at ease in surroundings that are not square and are uncertain what to do with time that has the wrong shape. Although it is not widely conceded, however, there are some flies in the, bene in the benevolent ointment of Urbania. Whisper it, but many of the three P's, the prisoner, patients, and pupils, do not always allow themselves to benefit with their time in one or other institution, a fact which has, okay, which has occasioned great sadness and occasionally bouts of black rage among the benefactors. Many criminals go back to crime when their time is up inside. Many patients stubbornly remain ill and even elect to die, both inside and outside their clinics. And large numbers of pupils, although they are gratifyingly and permanently cured of their youth, are not at all cured of their ignorance. The benefactors and their friends, however, have found the ideal solution to, the, to this problem. They build larger institutions, keep more people in them for longer periods, and declare that the institutions mark the greatness of Urbania, having taken the citizens from the depths of chaos to the heights of good order and social harmony. Anyone supposing otherwise is quietly taken off to a fourth institution that no one ever talks about. Those who have eyes, let them see. Those who have ears, let them listen. <clears throat> Do you see the message here? I might be something of a reformer. Um, I think that we can tweak things here and there. Rebuilding society towards... Uh, some ideal to point it towards something like that. As a sometime history student, I've concluded that one of the biggest problems of the 20th century was too much idealism. You notice that almost all of the 20th century totalitarians were saying that they were going to build a utopia, but all that they did really, at the end of the day, was concentrate on weeding the garden removing the weeds, as opposed to actually building a better society. <clears throat> In any proposed ideal, you're going to have people who don't like it, or who don't want to play along. Um, what do you do with that? What do you do with that fact? Shunning, banishment, secession, ostracism, execution, the gulag, the train to Auschwitz, or just the fourth institution that no one ever talks about. Find me a utopia that doesn't require, ultimately, one of these things, and I'll listen. But as I tend to agree with the benefactors here, the problem is we're dealing with humans. Humans don't um, don't always respond to any uh, or don't always fit in to a logical system. Raw human nature. What are we? What are humans? Remember, we're dealing with humans here in any um, ideal experiment, social or otherwise. Uh, well, we are dealing with a social experiment here. Um, <clears throat> what are humans? Humans are inconsistent, contradictory, illogical. Among other things, we are also consistent, non-contradictory, and logical. What do you do with that? How do you lead such people? I'm reminded of Charles de Gaulle. He said, of the French, he said, how on earth do you rule a country that has, I forget the number, 397 varieties of cheese? or um, what Greeks like to say about themselves. If you have 50 Greeks, you have 50 opinions. What do you do about people who just, by their very nature, want to do it their way and not everybody else's way? Um, in the Anglosphere, we like to think that we, we have a, uh, an ethic that um, values the individual. I don't really believe that we do it, it con uh, compared to other countries. <clears throat> countries that value the individual um, often don't have to deal with, um, or often have to deal with fractiousness 
in a way that most other countries, countries that don't value the individual, don't. In the Anglosphere, we're kind of our system is kind of on autopilot because everybody agrees with the way things should go. But you know, I mentioned France. French politics tends to be a lot more turbulent because the average French person has a habit of mind where if anyone tells him anything that he doesn't go along with, he'll just say, "Well, the hell with you. I don't care what you say." Um, I am me. I'm not you. I don't fit into your stupid utopia. And you don't like that? Well, too bad. Which is why, of course, people say the French government is a lot more heavy-handed than the government in, say, England or whatever. Because there's... How do you deal... How do you rule a country that has 397 varieties of cheese? How do you deal with people who just almost instinctively buck any authority out there? Um... And I think that that's going to happen. I think you're going to have people who, just by virtue of being humans, don't fit in. The problem, as the benefactors say, is raw human nature. I'm not even saying that humans have one nature, either. I'm saying humans are a mass of contradictions. And any proposed idea as to how to deal with that, or deal with or to manage human society, any proposed utopia or ideal, or even this way is better than that way, is going to have to take that into consideration. The 20th century, especially the first half of it, strikes me as just one long bout of angry, frustrated idealism um, following another. Everybody is so frustrated with the fact that huma humans can't fit into whatever ideal uh, somebody comes up with that they get angry and they start imprisoning or killing people. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying that I believe in a slippery slope in that regard. I don't. But I do believe, though, that that's an ever-present danger in these sorts of things. Is human society something we should aim to perfect, or is it something we should aim to cope with or manage? I think I know what I think people know what my answer is. It's more on the lines of managing human affairs than trying to perfect them.